Okay, so this is a weird rant about survivors of the flood. Yeah. So, um, I just watched this, and it it seemed good. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm gonna say here because that was just a lot. So let's just let's just start at the start. Yeah. So the doctor. Like, so we start off from right where we left off, which was nice. Um, we didn't, er, it probably wasn't right where we left off, but, you know, like, there didn't seem to have been anything that happened from where we left and then where we started, which, that's cool, you know? That's what we want to see. This is a more serialized series, that's what you want to see, because that, gives you more like it gives more of a sense of continuation so we start off with the doctor in this like weeping angel hive mind or something i didn't really get it if it was like a hive mind if this was just like a thing i i'm assuming it's a hive mind or like at least some realm that the angels reside in like I don't really know what to make of it beyond that. So we're just gonna go with that. So the angels like talking to the doctor being like, we are transport. She's confused. I'm sort of confused. Like we knew what they were doing from the last episode, bringing her back to the vision. Be like, we knew that was ha what was happening, but how? Like, I guess I have to just keep going, but, like, so division is between universes. How, so, like, how, I don't get how the weeping angels have that power, especially since we don't see any weeping angels in division. We just see, or... It's so weird, because Division's like the name of the organization and the place, and like, oh my god, Chris Chibnall, please, could you have at least given us, like, Division headquarters? But no, it's like, specifically called in the episode, this location is Division, while the group is also called, oh, okay. <laughs> so, we have Division. So, Division, the location, the, I'm just going to say the Division headquarters is, like, in between dimensions. So, that's cool. That's fine. We now have a multiverse in the Doctor Who universe. Or, you know what I mean. <laughs> Which, to be fair, we have had before because we've had, at least, I don't know Classic Who that much. So, <laughs> I don't know much if there was anything in there. But we had, like... We did have Rose Tyler in the alternate, in the parallel universe, or it might have been called a dimension at that point, but it was a universe. So, like, yeah. I don't, like, now I'm thinking about that, and it's like, well, the TARDIS could technically go in between universes back then. So, for Division to have done this, it doesn't seem as impressive though maybe because they're like staying there that would make more sense i don't know D whatever i'm thinking too much into it this is doctor who you know nothing is ever going to completely follow canon and that's fine like that's completely fine but anyway so i i really do not again i don't get how the weeping angels like can transport people not only between universes, or, well, I guess they're not transporting people, they're transporting themselves. So, that's a bit more, I guess, like, because we only know they transport people through time. So, them transporting other people by turning them into weeping angels, I guess, I guess like i'm just gonna have to live with it but i don't get how that can happen like that's another one of the things that 
the series has really or all of the Chibnall series but like this one in particular because it is the most serialized has had problems where it's like Chibnall needs to get from point A to point B to tell his story and so he had like everything before point A is alright everything after part B is alright but getting between those places getting the doctor from it wasn't Sheffield but it was like England to um to division to the division headquarters that needed to happen we were already in a weeping angels episode and you know what i i can buy that the division that division has like weeping angels somehow controlled i like working for them i don't know they're they're a group of time lords like there's a reason there's a fan theory that like weeping angels have something to do with the time lords you know like that yeah i'm fine with that but like going from there that doesn't make sense but anyway okay i've been rambling on this too long this is going to be completely unfocused if you haven't already tell oh god um okay so we go from division so the doctor just arrives in division they have to quantum lock her that's not i don't feel like that's what quantum lock means but whatever and then i'm pretty sure we jump straight to yaz dan and fuck i can't remember his name the professor i i remembered his name so well until right now jericho that's his name jericho so we jump to yaz Dan and Jericho or well we don't know Jericho yet but and they're in some Mex no it was Egyptian thing and they're looking for some pot that can foretell like the day of destruction or something I okay sure whatever okay so, that doesn't make any sense. The fact that Jericho went with them, that makes sense. I'm, I, 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 I personally loved Jericho. I thought he did a great job. Um, so, like, I, I thought bringing him along, good idea. Do like that. Um, so, we have them in Egypt. They're looking for this pot. They get this pot. Yaz makes a big deal about it being stealing. Um, cool didn't really need a discussion about like tomb raiding and stuff in Doctor Who, but you know whatever. Like, I don't have a problem with it. I do agree. Just like, I don't feel like that need to be there. <laughs> so whatever, whatever, whatever. Uh, okay, so. Okay, so then we cut to them getting, like, getting the pot, um, de not deciphered, but translated into, like, a time that they can understand, you know? That makes sense. Cool, 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 cool. Um, some dude tries to blow them up. Um... This dude, we later find out, is probably um, working with the Grand Serpent. Or actually, no, I think it was confirmed. Yeah, it was, a con it was pretty much confirmed that somehow, or I guess not the first one, but we can assume pretty easily, that this assassin was working with the Grand Serpent. Um, and so I'll get into him later because he hasn't come up yet. And so, like, doesn't make much sense why someone would try to assassinate them. Uh, doesn't make any sense, actually, because how would anyone know what they're doing, I guess? I don't know. I, like, that's a, that's a thing that, like, will probably make more sense in the next episode. One, like, I guess part of the reason why I'm so confused with 
the at least at first the Yaz, Dan, and Jericho stuff is like, could we not have started, like, could we not have started their story where we left off too, like, um, I I, like. I guess, see, the issue is that this episode has so many plot threads that, like, taking a bit more time, like, I'm not even upset with how many is in it, per se. And this probably has to do with how many episodes they got or something, or unless, I don't know, but, like, I feel like there should have been a bit more time spent on how we got here with Yaz and Dan, because, like, they just kind of are here, and we just have to accept that, and we have no idea how they got here. Like, I don't even care about that, or why they're here. Like, wh what? Did, how did they find out about this pot? Why are they after this pot? Like, what is going on? I don't know. What? <sighs> like, I think what I would have done, I guess, or... I don't know if it's what I would have done, because I'm not... I'm not a Doctor Who writer, but... Um, like, what I think would have made sense... Is... When we cut away from the Doctor... We cut to Yaz and Dan and Jericho... Right where they were, and I think it was 1901? I think it was... Where they... Were stranded by the Angels? Like, left them... Just started back with them there. We're back in 1901 immediately after the doctor disappeared we see like the angels put the town back in place and then like we see yaz and dan and jericho all like like at least yaz is like like heartbroken or like worried or something about the doctor all of a sudden being missing and then Maybe they just, like, walk off. Jericho says, uh, we can stay in my lab for a bit. And then we cut to, like, two weeks later when the message from the doctor goes off in Yaz's pocket. Or Yaz finds the message before then or something. I don't know. Well, either way, somehow we get to the, to the doctor's message to Yaz. And then we, um, and then they like start going on this hunt because we only realize why they're going on the hunt after that message so we have no idea what they're doing before then so why start there anyway um i did think the adventures with yaz dan and jericho were like i thought they were pretty nice i thought they were pretty like light-hearted for the most part like fun little romps um it was nice to see that they're like capable of getting around and surviving without the doctor um i did think that like the jokes with the seer went on a bit too long when there was other especially when there was other parts that could have used more time um like even just earlier stuff but like i get that like this episode had a lot of just plot dump and exposition and while I do think most of it worked, personally, it definitely, like, they needed something to lighten it up. I just think they could have done that by giving us more scenes with Yaz, Dan, and Jericho rather than just extending that one, I guess. I don't know. Um, I did really like the extension of Find Your Dog or Fetch Your Dog. Um, I did, I did like that. Um, I don't really, like, they did not need to go to the Great Wall of China for that. Um, in fact, that is probably one of the w worst place to go, I think. Because that doesn't, like, I get the whole, haha, you can see the Great Wall from China, uh, of China from space. I get that was, like, the point of it. Um, I don't even know if that's true. Uh, but we're just, just to assume it is, um, at least in context. Especially, like, we're dealing with spaceships, so, like, they have technology to see it at least. 
but like they didn't even like do anything with the wall itself they wrote next to the wall which uh, okay i don't know uh, but okay that w i did think the fetch your dog uh and then cavanista fetch your human i will admit i agree with cavanista how why would you what he doesn't have time travel i'm pretty sure you guys know he doesn't have time travel why do you think he has time travel <laughs> uh, I, okay like i get that set up because like i'm assuming somehow the doctor in the next episode the doctor is going to get back into the universe and like uh, Ka they're gonna go back in time with Cavanista and like that's how they're gonna find Danyaz and Jericho or something I don't know anyway <laughs> so then I think that's all of like so then we have the Bell and Cavanista stuff I did like that um I think I don't know I, I, I I've I've so far actually really enjoyed most of Bell's stuff, um, and Cavanista is so fun. I do really enjoy both of them in this series, um, so that's fun, and I had a good time seeing them interact. Um, it's drawing all of like the desperate plot threads a bit more together while still creating more. <laughs> uh, but like there wasn't much there. Um, that I, that I feel like I should talk about now. So, um, then we have the Grand Serpent and Unit. And I didn't get that it was the Grand Serpent until he revealed it himself. Um... I don't know if I was supposed to get it before then, but I did not. Like, it, like to be fair, I did just catch up on the episode on, like, Flux last weekend or something, but, like, I did not remember him. <laughs> or, like, I remembered him. I did not remember what he looked like. So I hope I wasn't supposed to remember that. Um, but, hey... You know, that's, that's fine. Um, I, I did, like, I, I liked seeing, like, the creation of Unit. I liked seeing, like, the manipulation of Unit, to some extent, by the Grand Serpent. And how, like, how, like, he was kind of still incompetent at it. Because, like, he had to resort to just killing a bunch of people. Because, like none of them gave him his way or they found him out and it's just like dude you were just incompetent what i like kate stewart like oh yeah she's back that was cool i did like seeing her again um forgot that she existed because like the show kind of did like and i don't mind you know things just appear and disappear in doctor who and you're just supposed to accept it and like i do so i don't care but like it's cool seeing her back she did a good job i liked her um but uh yeah grand serpent i i i don't get what he, like we got no hints as to what his plan is we got nothing all we know all we know so far is that he wanted to take over unit um he eventually let the Sun suntarans in through the lupari blockade or shield or whatever how though the lupari like unit is pretty advanced especially like modern unit modern unit is pretty advanced they've got some pretty cool tech they got pretty cool stuff I don't think they have, like, the the Lupari seem to have, like, faster than light travel. I don't think, 
unit has that level of tech yet. I just, that doesn't seem reasonable to me to like be like b comparisons. Like you have the Lupari who are somehow able to hold back the flux. Cause like in episode one, the flux was right in front of her. The flux was right in front of her. Like, say all you want about, like, the doctor stopping it. The Lupari, like, seemed to have it handled, I think. Like, according to the show's logic, because the doctor with the time vortex didn't seem to be doing much. Like, that didn't seem to harm the flux much. So, like, what? Like, they're literally stopping this universe ending phenomena and somehow unit has like i guess you could say that the grand serpent probably helped them but like still i don't know <sighs> okay but then like his plan is to make a deal with the centaurans to let them in to do what like what is his and the goal here, because all we got before this was that he was, like, he was corrupt. Like, he, he wanted his own gain. What does he have to gain? Like, this is a man who is just concerned with his own gain, supposedly. Or mostly concerned with it, at least. What does he have? What stake does he have in this? Like, I, I don't want to just... Like, I could wave this away by saying, we'll find out next time, but, like, I don't know, why is he here? And how did he get here? Like, or, I guess that's not as important. Um, does, the, like, the big important thing for me right now is, like, does he know what a TARDIS is? And does he know that there is a TARDIS? Um, I don't know. I don't. I don't really know. But, okay. And then, Swarm and Azure, they were doing things. They sure were. Uh, doing things. What were they doing? Not entirely sure. They, like, took power from a bunch of, like, beings. They took, like, their energy or something, and then used that to be able to break into Division. And then they killed Tech Taeun? Why? Like, I get why the Ravengers would. Like, I, from their perspective, it makes sense. But why from a story perspective? We literally just met Tech Taeun. We Like, this... This episode, she was established as a character. We've had her name dropped before, but this is the first time we're seeing her. Or, I guess, like, first time we're seeing her as Tech Taeun and had with her having more than, like, four lines. So, this is the first time she's established. Um, and, like... Why kill her off so early? Like, I get it, because they're running out of time. And that's the, like, they're out of, they don't have enough time to tell the story they want to tell. Because I don't care that Tech Taeun died. This is some person who's a head, who's the head of this mysterious organization who is powerful enough to literally destroy universes. And, like, I know nothing about her. I don't care about her. Ugh. Okay. More positives, because this is... I, I love... I don't get why they brought back the Ood for this. Like, there was... They could have made their own or whatever, but, hey, you know, I like Ood. The Ood are pretty cool. We're really overused in the Tenant era for random-ass shit, but, hey, you know, the Ood are pretty cool. I do like them. So... Hey, you know, classic call, or not classic, but, like, callback, sure, whatever, like, sure, um, and then you have, uh, uh, 
and then you have the fob watch. And y yeah, no, that's cool. Like, the fact that this has been established in multiple occurrences that, like, the Gallifreyans store, like, memories, identities, all that stuff in fob watches. I think it's been a bit. I don't think it was done with the Master in Series 12. I haven't rewatched any of Series 12, so I can't remember. <laughs> but I don't think it was done with him. So, you know, them reminding us what was going on, like, I I didn't need it. I knew immediately when we saw the fob watch, like, or the, I don't even know if it's a fob watch, but, like, the watch, I understood what was going on. Um, so, yeah. But, okay. Um, so, yeah. Generally, the, the stuff on Division... Okay, so more Division stuff, because that was, like... It felt like the bulk of the episode, even if it wasn't. Um, but, okay. So, Division. Division. What is going on? Why are, like... They're destroying the universe because they set the Doctor loose? Like... And they're, like, like, it's pretty clear they're actually scared of the Doctor, even if Tectaeon wouldn't, like, say it. Like, what? What? Like, what could the Doctor be doing? Like, like, are you saying she was a threat before? Or she found out about Division, or only sense, like, what, what, uh, so, like, was she a threat before she found out Division, only after she started looking out, looking for Division, like, who knows what's going on, oh, yeah, in, like, Cavanista was part of Division, he still has his memories, why is he protecting against the Flux if the Flux is, like, the Division plan? Like, is he not with Division anymore? If so, why haven't they, like, captured him, killed him, whatever? I don't know. Um. Fuck. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Okay. So. Division was started by Time Lords. That's cool. That's why I assumed, you know, Division... Like, on, only the Time Lords would have this much power and go this far. Because, like, we've seen Time Lords go to insane lengths before. Like, Rassilon. Um, you could have just brought back La Rassilon to some, for some extent. Because, like, it seems like this is the shit he would do. Based on what I remember about Rassilon from whenever I last watched episodes with him. Like... This seem like he he seems to be like just he would go this far, um, but hey, whatever, okay. Uh, what else? Like her con the doctor convincing the ood that was weird, that was fucking weird. The ood like I don't know that like yeah no he he. He was under orders not to. Like, it makes sense for him not to. So why does he, I guess? Or, you could say for his species, but I don't know. I don't know. The, the issue is, is this is just, like, a ton of exposition threads. And, like, none of the threads are bad, I would say. None of the individual parts are bad. Not all of them are fleshed out enough. Not all of them, like, uh, not, like, some of them are a bit too much just straight exposition. Um, though we did need that, is the thing. Is like, I don't, like, I, I ha like, I know I'm kind of ranting and, like, getting confused and upset with the episode. But, like, while watching, I was having a decent time. I genuinely enjoyed, like, all of the Yaz, Dan, and Jericho stuff. Um, like, the Doctor stuff was alright. Um, uh, the Grand Serpent stuff was fun. And, I, 
I, I do think it is pretty fun how he's like actually just incompetent. It was nice seeing Kate Stewart. I loved the Osgood name drop. Even like the problem with this series is it seems to be just like it seems to be fifty percent Chip Noel fanfic, fifty percent fan service, fifty percent like underdeveloped stuff. And that's the issue. It's like none of this is developed enough yet. All of the individual parts, like personally, I've enjoyed uh, to some extent every episode. There's been at least something in ep every episode that made me think, yeah, this is pretty good. Maybe not Fugitive of the Jadoon good, but like, you know, I think all of this is like better than season series 11 for sure especially considering i never fucking finished that series i've only seen like half of it it's it, like i've seen every episode of modern who except for like half of series 11 <laughs> like this is by far the best chibnall series but like boy is this peak chibnall like you can tell that like the issue with series 11 is it's not what he wanted to do the problem with series 12 was that, like, he didn't go full out on what he wanted to do. And then this series, he's going full out. And it's, like, the best he's done, like, as a series. Not individual episodes, but as a series. I've genuinely enjoyed the majority of this series. But, like, they're just... They're honestly there just needs to be more or less like they're either they either needed to give more time to everything just add more episodes or they needed a less complex story because like we still aren't sure what the flux is or why they released it this was the entire conflict of episode one was the flux and we still have no idea what's going on with it and you know i can handle that you know but like you can't just keep making the same like you can't just keep adding on the series is almost over and we're still adding we like you have to take a break at some point chibnall like Come on. I don't know what else to say. Like, there just seems to be too much here. And not enough time to develop it all. And, like, that's my biggest complaint. Because, like, I've liked it. Vinder is cool. He was in this episode. I talked about... I don't even, even know if I said his name yet. Like, he, he was cool, I guess. I'm... I like how he was like, um, how the Ravengers were like, you think you could evade, we wouldn't sense your presence? He's like, no, I, I assumed you could. And it's like, yeah, of course. He's not dumb. Like, they knew his name before, I'm pretty sure. Like, he's not dumb. And that's cool. Like, he was trying to get more information. Oh, yeah, he got into a passenger. Like, we got to see the inside of a passenger. That's pretty cool. We got to see what's her face. Um, That was kind of cool, I guess. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I, like, there's, there's so much here, but there's not enough to say much on. Because all of it, like... I would have preferred if they just, like, put Survivors of the Flux Part 1 or something. Just because, like, all, except for Episode 1, which was entirely set up, the, most of the episodes, I think, have worked, at least on some part, on their own. War of the Sontarans was a fun romp, and honestly should have been in a different series because it was it, it, it could have just standed stood on its own for the most part 
they, they would have needed to change a few things, but I genuinely, like, that was a good standalone episode. Let's see, what else was there? There was, um, uh, there was, uh, Once Upon Time. That was, that was a pretty cool episode. That was, like, a very fun and experimental episode. I get that not everyone likes it, probably, but, like, it was a fun experiment. I, I liked what they were doing, even if it wasn't fully executed well. Um... Uh, then the village of the angels, I think it was it called that one. I really liked what it did with the angels. I thought it was pretty cool. I thought the effects were cool. Um, you know, the quantum extraction shit like doesn't entirely make sense, but you know, because it's where the angels were sending people like in the past, like how it was all spacey, you know, there's enough angels, I can just let it slide. I can just say, oh, sure, I can see how it's connected. And then this one, like, this one can't stand on its own. The, like, the individual, like, even just the individual plot threads, if you remove the Doctors, which is directly addressing the over overarching series plot, I think most of this could have stood on its own, for the most part. Like, I would have been fine with a full episode of just the Yaz, Dan, and Jericho stuff. Maybe cutting to, um, like, uh, Bell, Cavanister, and Vinder. Um, I don't know about Vinder, because he was in it for, like, five minutes, and we needed... Uh, it was just set for next episode. But, like, having the Bell and Cavanister stuff, and having them have more banter. Um, like... If... If they did that, that would have been cool, you know? Like, I thought I would I would probably say that would be an alright episode on its own. But then, like, it's just too much in not enough time. And the episode is, like, 50 minutes anyway. Or, or, I guess there were ads in there, but it was still, like, 50 minutes. And it's like, you had 50 minutes and you still f left me, like... This should have been expanded on more. Like, I don't know. I feel like the big feeling I'm getting from this series is that it will be a lot more fun to go back and binge it. Especially after I have hindsight. Because at least then, like, uh, because, like, I'll be able to watch them all at once. I'm like... Because right now, I'm like, I have to wait another week to, like, just figure out any more details on any of this. But, like, if I just have to wait through the click of a button, that's a bit better. Um, because, like, there's a lot of interesting stuff, but just none of it's developed. I don't know. I feel like I should probably stop talking, because I'm probably just getting super repetitive at this point. But anyway, like... Doctor Who, it's, uh, it's the only show I watch anymore. I hope they wrap this up well.